Ezekiel chapter number 5. We'll begin reading in verse number 5. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I've set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. We can come into the house of God this morning. We thank you for a lovely day. We thank you for the blessings of the day. We're thankful, Lord, that you do daily loadeth us with benefits. But Lord, as we heard last Sunday night, many times we're too lazy to take advantage of your benefits. Lord, we're thankful for these that have assembled themselves in your house this morning. We're thankful for a good Sunday school hour. We're thankful, Father, for the good report of the good jail services and the one lady that trusted Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes that, Lord, you'd sit down amongst us, that, Lord, I can already sense a heaviness in the house of God. Lord, I realize that we have been busy, but not so busy about the Father's business. The weight of that is already setting in on thy people. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for being a good God. Thank you for being long-suffering. Thank you for being full of tender mercy. And thank you for your kindness toward us for Jesus' sake. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes that the Word of God would break like a hammer but it would also reveal, it would also encourage, it would edify, it would be exactly what we need for it to be this morning. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us, Lord, to say everything you'd have us to say. But, Lord, put a watch guard about my lips that I don't say anything contrary to the word or will of God. Lord, glorify your namesake. And, Lord, bless your people. Send revival, save that one nearest hell, and we'll bless you and praise you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to what Israel was going through. Notice, first of all, that Israel had changed in verse number 6. said, She had changed my judgments into wickedness, more than the nations and my statutes, more than the countries that are round about her. For they refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Israel had changed. Can I say that in this text that Israel is being charged? Look in verse number 7. Can I say it's one thing if somebody accuses you. It's another thing if God accuses you. And God in verse 7 says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye multiplied more than the nations uh, that are round about you, and have not walked in my statutes, uh, neither have kept my judgments, uh, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, even I am against thee. He charges them because they had not kept that which he told them to keep. Then we see that she is condemned. Verse number 8 again, he says, I am against thee. 
and will execute judgments in the midst of thee and in the sight uh, of the nations. Uh, we find that he condemns her and he promises her that he will execute judgment. He is letting her know in, these, uh, in this chapter that pestilence is coming, that famine is coming, and that the sword is coming. Other nations are coming to overthrow Israel. Uh, I was reading this and looking at this, and, and, and uh, I, I could not get away from it. I'm interested in verse number 9. He says, And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like. God says, I'm going to do to you what has never been done to your nation, and when I get done with it, it will never be done again. Why? Look what he says. Because of all thine abominations. I'm going to preach on this thought this morning. I want to preach on America and abomination. America and abomination. Can I say the word abomination means an object of abhorrence? When God looks at America today, God detests America According to the God of the Bible and what he has printed and what he has uh, set forth as his judgments, as his statutes, uh, uh, God looks at America and he gets sick at the sight of America. Can I say, just like Israel, America's changed. Uh, just like Israel, uh, uh, America's charged. Uh, and can I say, uh, outside the grace of God this morning, uh, and churches like us that are preaching the truth, uh, America is under condemnation. Uh, you say, why, preacher? Uh, America was birthed by God. Uh, do you realize our founders did not come here uh, and the pilgrims did not come here seeking gold. Uh, they came here seeking God. Uh, they came here seeking uh, uh, freedom from a religious oppression. Uh, they came seeking to be able to worship uh, Almighty God. Uh, and God birthed this nation. Uh, a rose bloomed in the wilderness uh, and this nation became the greatest nation on the face of the earth uh, because uh, she started out seeking God. Uh, can I say, uh, not only was America birthed by God, America was blessed by God. Uh, 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 God blessed this nation. Uh, 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 there's never been an industrial nation like this nation. Uh, there's never been a prosperous nation like this nation. Uh, uh, most of the world looks at you I, uh, just common folks in this land uh, and they look at us like we're millionaires uh, uh, because we have things that they can't even dream about because uh, God's been good to America. And can I say, not only did he birth her, not only did he bless her, but can I say this nation uh, has breached away from God. Mm. Can I say, look at what Israel was guilty of. It says that she had changed and that she had refused to keep his statutes and his judgments. Uh, 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 but it goes on to say that the nations around them were not as wicked and didn't do the things that Israel was doing. Mm. Can I say that America has become a nation of indifference? It doesn't matter if you go on the federal level, the state level, the local level, you can't get politicians to agree on anything. And can I say that once America stood for the red, white, and blue, but we got people in America that hate America. We've got citizens of this land that refuse to fly our flag, but they have no problem flying Ukraine's flag. Can I say, uh, 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 if God doesn't show up in his churches and send revival, it won't be long, we'll be flying China's flag. Hmm? We got a, a lame duck president that was in Canada and was uh, referring to Canada, but uh, said uh, uh, how much he appreciated China. It's because he's been bought and paid for by China. Hmm? I'm just here to tell you, we are a land of indifference. We've got the neighbors against neighbors in this land. 
one side of the street they're liberal, the other side of the street they're conservative. Uh, 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 you go in the school system, you've got some teachers that are liberal, some that are conservative. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, it's not only neighbors, it's not only co-workers, uh, uh, but even in families. Uh, you've got some that uh, believe in God and some that don't believe in God. Some that are liberal uh, and some, my dear friends, uh, uh, that are conservative. Uh, you can't even have uh, a good uh, uh, thought process of conversation conversation in a group of people without offending somebody because we are a nation of indifference used to America would rally around what was best for America but today if you say that America should uh, be concerned about America you are looked upon like you are an absolute de uh, derelict used to Americans took care of Americans and now America's banking system's going broke, Americans are going broke, and we're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine and other nations. We had a president praising Canada for the border security from the north, and while he's doing that, he allows everything and everybody to come through our southern border. Mm. Listen, America's falling apart. Mm. We was just, uh, you know, we just... Uh, Spent a little time in the hospital. Miss Nett said my hospital bill be over $100,000. Thank God for insurance. But we'll still have to pay some of that. My son and daughter-in-law just had a baby. No telling how much that's going to be. She was in the hospital three days. Mm -hmm. I know it isn't cheap. Miss Nett and I went to the post office the other day. I see an illegal coming out with his illegal wife. Got an illegal baby. And I know in my heart they went to an emergency room, had that baby, and that baby, it didn't cost them a penny. That baby got uh, 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 welfare rights, and yet there are people in America, there are veterans, there are senior citizens, there are folks that can't get support, can't get Social Security, and we're giving it to illegals like it's nobody's business. Listen, I am not, for, uh, not against people coming to this nation. If I lived anywhere else in the world, I'd want to live here too. But for generations, there has been a legal process to come and become a citizen of this nation. Uh, and by the way, to become a citizen, you have to speak the language. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, Congress won't even accept that English is the very language of our nation. That's because before long, Spanish will be. We become a nation of indifference. We become a nation of indulgence. I don't know whatever happened to America, but we become a me first attitude society. Can I say the essence of sin is my right to my claim to myself? And everybody is out for numero uno in America. Me, 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 me. Get all I can get. Don't care about anybody else. We are a land of indulgence. America is never satisfied. No matter how much and how blessed we are of God, it's never enough. Yet the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Can I say America has become a nation of indolence? That means lazy. Can I say that somewhere around 75% of Americans are obese? Yet Americans buy more workout equipment, more self-help videos, and more uh, uh, gym memberships than any other country in the world? Can I say that uh, uh, we've raised two generations of young people that do not have a work ethic? Can I say that kids just keep staying in college and keep accruing college debt because they don't want to get out and work? Can I say that you talk to the average teenager, they don't know what they want to be, but they know they don't want to do anything. Uh, can I say a lot of young people today have no aspiration to work, to provide for themselves. They want to uh, uh, live off of mommy and daddy all their lives. Somewhere along the line, mommy and daddy need to cut that cord. Hmm? The Bible does say if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Hmm? We have developed America to be a welfare state. Friends, we are already socialistic, uh, and if something doesn't happen soon, we will be communistic. Uh, 
Can I say the government loves having uh, 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 folks living off of them because they can secure their vote and they can control them. Uh, 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 the last time I saw the statistic, uh, 43 percent of Americans are living off the government. Uh, I dare say it's much higher than that because if you include all the illegals, uh, most people in America are living off the government. And those that worked hard all their lives and paid into Social Security are not guaranteed it will even be there. Yep. Amen. Mm, Joe Biden mashed potato brains that ran on the fact that Republicans want to take away your Social Security and he was four seniors. He is trying to do away with your uh, 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 Part B Medicare benefits. Why? Because it costs a lot of money to pay for people to live off the government. And when you got more people living off the government than you can tax people to pay for them living off the government, there's a big problem. And can I say, since George W. Bush was president, they've started printing money, and they're just printing it on paper, but there's nothing behind it. Uh, and can I say, as we sit here today, America's a bankrupt nation, uh, and China owns more of America than America does. And China's buying up farmland all over America. Mm -mm. You say, why? Mm, because them and our government's in cahoots to control the food population so they can control population. Do you think it's just an accident in two years that we have a, a food shortage supply and we have a chain shortage supply and we have all these uh, shortage supplies? Uh, no, they don't want you to have the life that you've had. Mm. we become a lazy nation. Heard a doctor say some of the hardest people that he has to deal with are young people because they won't look up off their phone long enough to answer their questions or how they're feeling. You talk to anybody that works with young people in the workplace and they can't get them to do their job because they're too busy on their phones. Mm -mm. It was a great day. Brother Ed when you had to go to a booth and drop a quarter into the phone to make a call. Amen. We were somewhere not long ago and I actually saw a pay phone. I about had a heart attack. It's probably what put me in the hospital. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, we've turned our young people into media sponges that are lazy and won't get out to work and do a chore or do anything around the house. And can I say it's not the government's fault. It's mom and dad's fault. And you're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Told you this wouldn't be popular. I ain't even preaching yet. Some of you broke out in a sweat. Can I say that America is, has become a nation of intolerance? Everybody wants to be right, but they don't intolerate anybody else's opinion. Mm -mm. Can I say, I am sick and tired of people wanting me to accept their lifestyle, but they have no tolerance of what I think and what I believe. I thought we did have a Bill of Rights that uh, gave us freedom of speech in this country, and you do have freedom of speech as long as you're a liberal. Mm. You say... Uh, anything against the, the woke or liberal agenda and they want to throw you in jail. Heaven help you if you're a preacher and you get up and you preach anything other than God is love. Can you believe the preacher preached against that? Oh, I'm just preaching the Bible, friend. And I say America's become a nation of immorality. And I say, we are the Sodom and Gomorrah of the world. Amen. And I say, in America, we are promoting and have for a long time sex. Now we're promoting and made it legal to gamble. I'm so sick and tired of all the gambling sites. And I promise you, Brother James, as sure as I'm standing on God's platform this morning... There are people in independent Baptist churches this morning uh, throughout this nation. Uh, they've got gambling apps on their phone, and before they get home, they'll check and see if they uh, pick the winner. 
Can I help you something? Gambling's a sin. Anything that is not a faith is sin. Uh, uh, putting your faith in a pony and putting your faith on a team and putting your faith is not putting faith in God. It is a sin, and you're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Mm -mm. Got real quiet on there. We must have some gambling apps on some phones in here. Uh, hey, if the school can take the kids' phones, we ought to check people's phones at the door, huh? Boy, that go. Boy, we thin them out real quick right there, brother Ron. We promote race. Mm. I don't know if you've heard what they're doing in San Francisco. San Francisco just passed that if you're black, then you can buy as many houses as you want for a dollar, and that uh, uh, you'll have all your student debt forgiven, uh, all your credit card debt forgiven. Uh, You'll be given $96,000 a year up to $5 million, and every black person gets that. You don't even have to ask it to, because you come from ancestries of slaves. The, the state of California is looking to do it. Who's paying for that, friend? And by the way, has any of those black people been slaves? Can they prove that even any of their ancestors were slaves? And can they prove that other blacks didn't sell out their ancestors to be slaves? You know who needs to pay for it? Uganda. Kenya. Oh, that's popular preaching right there. Brother Doug, you're a racist. I'm not a racist. Hey, can I help you? God's no respect of people. Huh? He don't care what color you are. Uh, he died for every one of us. Uh, and He'll save everyone, every race. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, this nation's went crazy uh, over race. Uh, can I help you with something? The black population even isn't the second most popular race in America. The Spanish population, the Mexican population has far surpassed the black population. Mm -mm. You know what the difference is? Mexicans come here to work. And until they get Americanized, they will work. That didn't cost you anything either. You don't see the Mexicans flooding the housing projects in the inner cities, do you? You're welcome. I didn't. I, I told you it wouldn't be popular. We promote race. Uh, unless you're a white fundamental Christian, you have rights in America. Mm -mm. America, it, it promotes climate change. Al Gore said 30 years ago, we'd be gone by now. Guess what? The glaciers are the same size as they were back then. Mm -mm. Uh we promote indecency in America. You can't watch a commercial without seeing half-naked people on there. It's promoted. It's an agenda. And it makes God sick. Can I say? We're not only a nation of immorality by what we promote, but we're a nation of immorality by what we pervert. America is perverting its society. Perverting it with the indoctrination, the indoctrination of same-sex relationships. Can I say, they, they've always been around, but America was better when they were in the closet. And uh, uh, their promotion is uh, they're free to choose to love whoever they want to. Well, that's true, but quit putting it in my face. I'm tired of looking at it. Huh? I'm tired of watching a TV show or a sporting event uh, and then the commercials for AIDS uh, medicines and they show men kissing men uh, and women kissing women uh, and freaks dancing with other freaks. Uh, I'm sick of it. Uh, hey, uh, if you want to live that way and die and go to hell, that's your choice, but I'm tired of looking at it. Uh, can I say that 96% of Americans... Uh, are not that lifestyle, uh, so we're tired of looking at it, my dear friends. Uh, they promote it. 
trying to make it normal. Even Uganda passed this week uh, no homosexuality or transgenders in their nation. Uh, they said nature made male and female. Uh, I'll take it a step further. Uh, God uh, made male uh, and female. Uh, you don't like it? Take it up with God. Uh, they promote transgender even down to first graders. I saw this meme, I kind of liked it. Said a five year old can't drive a car, five year old can't buy a beer, five year old can't buy cigarettes, five year old can't gamble or vote, but he can choose his sex. They're teaching it in school systems. They're flooding libraries with it. Even heard this week we're going to get a library in northern Kentucky that promotes the gay and transgender lifestyle. I pray God strikes it with lightning. Don't you burn it down, Phil. You'll go to jail. We'll be preaching to you. But if God burns it down, I'd say hallelujah. Hallelujah. They promote men playing women's sports. The only reason they do that is because they're not good enough to compete in men's sports. A bunch of little sissy pants. Get better. Huh? Might have had something to say if my daughter showed up for a basketball game and there was a seven foot fella in a wig on the other team. I might have had something to say about that. She probably would have beat me to it. I'm telling you, they're perverting our nation. Things that our nation used to esteem, like the Olympics, have been ruined by these freaks. I remember when the Olympics was a big deal. Now I can't stomach to watch it because ESPN promotes all this garbage and all this rainbow crowd. It's about time we took the rainbow back, by the way. And this may hurt some of y'all's feelings, but I done told my son that my granddaughter is not going to have a rainbow or a unicorn anywhere in her house. The only unicorn she's allowed to have is a, rhino, a rhinoceros. Uh, you say, what's wrong with a unicorn? I'm just tired of looking at them. Hmm. We're going to teach her how to use a wrench. Uh, what a socket set is. How to hit a softball and paint her nails. Can I say they per, they're perverting our nation with the use of pronouns? I refuse to call somebody a they. I'll call him him or her or freak, but I'm not calling them they. I'm not doing it. Hmm? I'm telling you, America's immoral by what she promotes, what she's perverted, but also what she's permitting. America is permitting legalized dope. I told my Sunday school class, I'm tired of smelling dope. I remember in the 70s where marijuana was a felony. You know, our sorry governor, by the way, marijuana is illegal in Kentucky. But our sorry governor signed some kind of legislation that our police officers are not allowed to indict people for marijuana. Thank God we've got a good sheriff here in Boone County. He told the deputies, he said, if you smell it, you arrest them for it. He said, we'll, we'll deal with the governor later. Hmm? Uh, I'm tired of sitting in traffic in my Corvette with the top down, and I've got to put the windows up and the top up because somebody three cars away is puffing away and it is gagging me to death. By the way, old people, that smell of skunk isn't always a skunk. We come out of Myers and you smell skunk. We come out of a restaurant, you smell skunk. You smell it everywhere and I'm sick of it. But see, our government is permitting it. Because if you get them on dope, you know, marijuana is a non addictive thing. Well, quit it then. But see, they know, and so does anybody with any sense. That's just a stepping stone to something harder, and something harder, and something harder. 
because what dope does, it'll take you to high, but uh, you spend your life trying to get to that high again, and that won't do it. So you need something a little stronger, and something a little stronger, and something a little stronger. And the government knows if they can get you hooked on something, they'll control you. Can I say they permit abortion in America? Even though the Supreme Court has struck down, struck down the, the, the statute of Roe versus Wade, kicked it back to the states, and now a lot of states are still even taking a step farther, even some states saying after the baby's born, you can take its life. And they permit that in America. I'm telling you, it makes God sick. They're permitting this woke agenda. Mm. During the pandemic, all those riots and all those fights and all the riots against police and all the riots of burning down cities and everything, can I say the government was behind all that. They permitted it. They employed those people to go to those cities and do those things. America is an immoral nation. So let me give you three points on what has led to America's abomination. What caused us to get here? I don't know. I was thinking about this is how my thought process got this week. It seems like just overnight somebody flipped a switch and America went crazy. You know, three or four years ago, we wasn't facing all this junk. I've watched a couple movies that were from the early 2000s here lately, and I'm thinking, now, how's that getting played? Something's happened in America. But we didn't get here overnight. What led America to become an abomination that makes God sick? Can I say, first of all, the country rejected God. Just like Israel changed and rejected God's statutes and judgments, so has America. Let me give you just a couple things that some of the early Americans stood for. George Washington, anybody ever hear him? Can I say that America wanted to make him king? He refused to have America a monarch. He, he wanted it to be a democracy. He refused to be king. Do you realize that they wanted to uh, uh, bury him under the Capitol building? They wanted uh, 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 everything about D.C. to be reminded of George Washington and how he led us out of the oppression from the British. This is what George Washington said. It is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. When's the last time we had a politician that governed that way? Not my lifetime. I've been around a long time. I'm a grandpa now. Hmm? No? We don't have politicians. You know what the politicians do? They start bringing out God when it's election time. Because enough of the people that go to church are too... too uh, insecure and don't read and don't understand what they really stand for uh, so they believe anything they say. And Washington said you couldn't rightly govern a nation without God in the Bible. This is what Benjamin Franklin said. Anybody remember that guy? Hmm? He said this, Here is my creed. I believe in one God, the creator of the universe, that he governs it by his providence, that he ought to be worshipped, the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, it is impossible that an empire can rise without his aid. Benjamin Franklin was not known as a godly man, but that sounded like a pretty good godly statement. I don't hear a lot of fundamental Christians talking like that today. And then Patrick Henry. One of the ratifiers of the Constitution said this. It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this very reason, peoples of other faiths have been afforded asylum, prosperity, and freedom of worship here. 
This nation was founded as a Christian nation. Uh, our constitution was founded uh, on the principles and oracles uh, of the Word of God. Uh, uh, they took the J J Judeo-Christian values uh, and mirrored them in our constitution and the fabric throughout our nation. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, if you study Washington, D.C. and go around, you'll see God was everywhere when this nation was founded. Uh, in the very Senate seat, uh, they have profiles of people uh, from uh, uh, millenniums uh, that stood for law and order. Uh, but there's only one uh, where the whole face is exposed. Uh, and it sits right across uh, uh, from the seat where the vice president has to look at. Uh, and it's the face of Moses. Uh, I want to tell you the first constant, uh, Senate seat and chamber uh, had the Ten Commandments on the door. Uh, hey, uh, we live in a nation uh, where you can no longer put a nativity scene at the courthouse. Uh, we live in a nation uh, where they've stripped God out of our schools. Uh, we live in a nation where you can't pray in school, uh, where you can't take your Bible in school. Uh, we live in a nation uh, that has rejected God, uh, rejected the things of God, uh, even said churches are non-essential in a pandemic. Uh, the most essential place there was uh, was a place where people could come, uh, pray, uh, get out of God. Uh, but America has rejected God, uh, and God is rejecting America. Amen. You reap what you sow. You either serve God and have His blessings, or you reject Him and deal with His judgments. Can I say... Wicked men like George Soros, Jeff Bezos, uh, work in the shadows and pay off politicians uh, 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 to uh, uh, thread the fiber of their woke agendas into our nation, and they do it gladly. Kentucky's got one of the worst. Mitch McConnell is a sewer rat from the swamp, and you're welcome. The only thing propping him up because he fell the other day is all them millions China's paid him. And I said, uh, America's become an abomination because our country has rejected God. Mm. Can I say, some of the very religions that Patrick Henry said found asylum now run America. I've been told there's this new AI technology they're trying to go to for the IRS on a lot of things. And the AI technology will not double check a Muslim. But if you're a Christian, they'll double check you. Hmm. Friends, it's coming down to we're going, we're going to find out who's real and who's not real. We about can do that anyway. Preaching has a good way of scattering, scattering goats and drawing in sheep. America's rejected God. Our country's rejected God. We've rejected God in the mainstream since Ronald Reagan was president. And friends... It's getting worse and worse and worse. There's more evil going on in our nation. You think all these school shootings and all these places that are getting shot up and blown up, you think that's all by accident? I'm telling you, the devil's been given free reign in America, and people are being possessed by the devil and doing some of these very heinous acts. So I don't believe that. Well, you can be wrong. Uh... And can I say a lot of these young people, they're being sucked in by a lot of things that these video games and media is playing to their minds. A lot of these apps, parents, are designed to take your children down a rabbit hole that you'd never let them go down. Mm. You can protect them to a certain point. But friend, you can't protect their mind what they're being exposed to unless you really pay attention to what they're getting involved in. That leads me to my second point. 
America has become an abomination because our castles or our homes have rebelled against God. Our country has rejected God and our castles have rebelled against God. The Bible says this, and if some of you wasn't about to pass out a minute ago, we're there right now. The Bible says in Ephesians, you do believe the Bible's God's word, don't, don't you? you? You do believe God wrote what he meant, meant what he wrote. You do believe that it is forever settled in heaven. You do believe that God has magnified his word above his holy name. You do believe that, don't you? All right, you ought to shout right here. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 21, or 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Ooh. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Some of you men are getting real short in that pew, and I ain't even looked up. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Look in chapter 6, verse Ephesians, verse number 1. Here you go, kids. This is for you. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, prov provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I said that our castles have rebelled against God. Say how? Well, first of all, let me just say because husbands have become soft. The husband is to be the head of the home. The husband is to be the Lord of the home. Jesus is to be Lord of the home. He's not to lord over his wife. He's to love his wife. Uh, he's to cherish her. Uh, he's to protect her. Uh, he's to provide for her. Uh, he's to have a manly uh, uh, presence for her. Uh, uh, but husbands become soft. Uh, say, how do you know that? Because uh, about every other commercial, uh, uh, the wife's off being the breadwinner uh, and the husband's doing the laundry. Uh, uh, the husband's changing the diapers. Uh, uh, the husband's doing the housework. Uh, uh, can I say? It's an attack on masculinity. Hey, if you're a man's man, America's against you. If you're a man's man, you're a thing of the past. But can I say this? That God wired men and women different. Can I say men are to be focused on providing for his home. Men are to be focused on getting a hold of God and making the right decisions for his home. Can I say women by nature? I prefer it when the man makes Makes decisions. Uh, women uh, uh, by nature uh, have been given something uh, about being a homemaker that men don't have. Uh, uh, women uh, are to be uh, uh, the keeper of the home uh, and to make certain that everything is right in the home. Uh, women are to nurture the children. Uh, women are to be the ones uh, uh, who submit to her husband and her husband's authority. Uh, but can I say in America, uh, most wives are running the households. Uh, most men are too soft to speak up. Uh, thank God for some manly men. Uh, but they're getting harder and harder to find. Uh, we've got role reversal in America. Now listen, I'm not a dinosaur. I know if you're going to have anything, it takes two incomes to have anything in America. Uh, hey, the government's made sure in taxation that you need two incomes just to get by. Unless you want to live in a tent. Huh? ride a bicycle other than that you're going to need a little bit of money and it usually takes to praise God if you can live on one income today praise the Lord but most of the time that's not the case most of the time it takes two people working and can I say a marriage is not 50-50 it's 100 and 100 you have to go all in and I say, men, there's nothing wrong with helping your wife around the house. Uh, there's nothing wrong uh, uh, with running a vacuum sweeper every now and then. Uh, 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 working uh, 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 around the house with your wife. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I highly recommend it. It'll give you good fellowship. Uh, uh, nothing wrong going to the grocery store with your wife. Nothing wrong with those things. Uh, but just know your role. Some men can't spend a dime without getting permission. Yeah. 
some women hold it over their husband if they make more money. Mm. Listen, thank God for a good wife. God made the woman to be a helpmeet to the man. Didn't make the woman be a slave to the man, a helpmeet. But women need to know their role. They need to submit to their husbands, be subject to them. And men need, need to know their role. You know why sometimes women are making a lot of decisions? Because men won't. Hmm? Huh? And some of you husbands need to tell your wife when they're wrong. There's been more church problems in America because of a woman running her mouth and a husband not being man enough to say, Honey, you're wrong. Thank you, Brother Ron. Got one, one spiritual person in the whole building. See, if you've been around church as long as I have, you've seen that. Hmm? Uh, and you get woman fighting against woman, and that causes problems. Uh, then it all gets dumped in the preacher's lap because the uh, uh, husbands won't do their job. Hmm? You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Some of your men are afraid of your wife. You need to be afraid of God more. Hmm? Uh, and then let's get down to the children. Hmm? You got men that are soft and women that don't submit, but you got children that are rebellious and they're ruled by social media. I'm going to make this statement. It's going to make a lot of people mad. don't really care. It was present. But we didn't have all the problem with bullying and teenage suicide when folks didn't have them phones. Uh, there was bullying. Might have done some of that myself. Especially if they had a limp wrist. We just put them back in the closet. Uh, but there wasn't all this cyberbullying and all this stuff that played on these kids' psyches. Can I say, God help me, I'm really going to stir it here. There wasn't no ADHD when I was a kid. It was called a spirited child. You didn't drug them. You put them on a bicycle in the backyard, and you put them on a swing in the backyard, and you got them out running around, you know, chasing chickens and stuff, and then wore them out, and then they'd go home and go to bed. Yeah. Huh? And if children mouthed off in my generation like they mouthed today, they got wore out in another direction. Oh, yeah. Huh? Um, you say, did you, did, you, did you get spankings? No, no, no. We got beatings. I didn't get many, but I got enough. I was like the other day, there's a neighbor of ours got this weeping willow tree, and he never trims it, and it grows over the sidewalk. It drives us crazy when we walk the dog. I grew up, we had two weeping willow trees in the backyard. Hated them trees. They're ugly. Hated them. Hated them. Well, I, I, I mouthed off to Mama one time, and she told me to go cut a switch. Well, I was smart. I said, I'm going to cut some of them weeping willow things. They're just soft. They ain't going to do nothing. Man, that was like uh, Indiana Jones's whip, man. She, whoo, whoo, whoo. So what happened? I didn't mouth off to mama much anymore, and I certainly didn't go get one of them things. Huh? We got parents today that allow their children to be rebellious. And can I help you with this? Most of the time, they don't learn it on social media. They learn it from you. If mama's mouth and daddy, guess what the children are going to do? If daddy's mouthing on mama, guess what the children are going to do? If mama and daddy are mouthing on the coach, guess what the children's going to do? If mama and daddy are mouthing on the teacher, guess what the children are going to do? That's where they learn it. Amen. Uh, but yet oh let's just go to church Jesus loves us you got a war zone at home how can you worship at church you've rebelled against God by not being in your right roles and you've raised 
little heathens. You haven't raised them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They haven't seen the love of Christ at home. How do you think it's going to affect them when they come to church and hear about it? Why do you think most of our Baptist churches, as soon as young people get of age, they get gone? Now, that's not always the case. I know some good godly parents that raised their children right, and their children got of age. Listen, they got a will, and they chose to go a different direction. It wasn't the parents' fault, but I can tell you, the vast majority it is. It is. Hmm. And let me just, I don't know I'm on this. I've done made some of you mad. Let's get you good and mad. Let's stoke it up a little bit, Brother Ray. Can I do that? Uh, hey, Brother Jeff, good to see you. Uh, can I say this? Probably shouldn't. You not only create a war zone at home, but you enable this child by giving them everything they want with no consequences, and you never expect anything in return. Listen, my parents knew I loved to play ball. I know you all think you love to play ball. No, I lived for it. There's a big difference. My parents knew that was the love of my life. So there was a rule. If I didn't get straight A's, I didn't play ball. That wasn't, Brother Ron, if I got most A's and a couple B's. I had to be straight A's and on the honor roll to play ball. Hmm? You know what it helps some of you parents? Attach those things they want to do with some stipulations. You don't get A's. Now, maybe your kid's not got the faculties to get A's. You don't get B's. You don't do your homework. You don't do chores. You don't take out the trash. You don't pick up your room. You don't do things. You don't play things. Might change a little attitude in your children. And if that don't work, go find your weeping willow tree. That will work. Hmm. Can I say, our castles have rebelled against God. You bring them to church every time we have church. It's maybe six hours a week at best. If I preach one of Thad's messages where I'm long-winded. Revival meeting. That's just a fraction of time compared to what they got at home and what they got at school. If you're dependent on all they're going to get about God when they're here, you're way behind the eight ball. What they learn at home ought to be re reinforced here. That didn't cost anything. Well, the last point. America's become an abomination because our country has rejected God, our castles rebelled against God, and our churches have repulsed God. Revelation 3 is in the Bible. We've been increased with goods and have need of nothing. God said, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. The average church in America is repulsing God. Can I say many of the independent fundamental Baptist churches in America are repulsing God? This is to say, how are churches repulsing God? Glad you ask. First of all, by refusing to obey His commandments. Isn't that not why Israel was in trouble in Ezekiel? She rejected Him. It's amazing. We can preach the Bible. We can preach the, the epistles and tell you how to live, not to let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth, not to be filled with anger, wrath, lasciviousness, all those kind of things. Uh, but as soon as you get to the car, you forgot what you heard preached, uh, and you certainly aren't living it. Amen. What most people do, instead of obeying His commandments, we choose to rewrite them, make them more applicable for me. Hmm? Uh, we refuse to embrace His character. God said, be you holy, for I'm holy. Amen. I wonder how different America would look if there were some holy people of God walking around. Hey. Yeah, you're welcome. We refuse to fulfill His commission. Hmm. I haven't counted them. I wonder how many of them packets are gone back there. Hmm. 
I wonder how many tracts get taken out of here every week to give to people. Hmm? We don't give the gospel out. And we repulse God. That was the last commandment he gave his church before he went to heaven. Is take the gospel to every creature. We repulse God by refusing to show his compassion. Hmm? I'm thankful our church... When folks come in here, don't matter where they came from, don't matter what they look like, we show them the kindness of God. Hmm. But sometimes we don't show each other the kindness of God. We're more tolerant of things in the world than we are of other believers. Hmm. We've repulsed God by refusing to submit to His control. I'm convinced, Brother Ron, a lot of people know Jesus as Savior. Few know Him as Lord. Is he truly the Lord of your life? He's earned that right because he bought you with a price. Amen. Let me conclude with this. What can be done? We see all the problems in America. And I know what happens. We look at all that's going on. We think, what in the world can we do to change all that? Well, we can't. But we can change ourselves. And if enough of us change ourselves... God may, in his wrath, have mercy. And God may start sending a little more revival here, and a little more revival there, and all of a sudden a little bit more of America gets taken back, and we may not be able to change the whole thing, but we may be able to change some of it. But it starts with ourselves being willing to change. Well, how does that happen? First of all, we've got to repent. We've got to turn. We've got to be different than we've been. That's what repentance is. A change of mind and a change of heart we can't keep living the status quo and expecting different things that's the that's the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over and over expecting different results huh how many revival meetings do churches have to have have one in the spring one in the fall but there's never any change we've got to repent we've got to be revived Second Chronicles seven fourteen, the whole thing. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. Starts with us. Repenting and being revived. Humbling ourselves and praying and seeking his face. Turning from those things that we know displeases God. And then we gotta remain. We've got to remain faithful. God does not bless unfaithfulness. We've got to remain feasible, relevant. So many Christians have buried their head in the sand. They don't even know the problems of today because they're still trying to deal with the uh, uh, problems of the 70s. Hmm. Uh, I, I read after certain guys, you know, they, they come up with something. I think, man, wake up. We have a whole new generation out there that is all about social media. There's things being funneled into people's houses and minds and everything consume them. If I get stopped at a traffic light one more time because somebody won't go when it's green because they're on their phone, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. Yeah. It says, quit honking your horn. Tell them to go. You're too impatient. Nope, I'm just me. Get out of my way. We've got to be feasible. We've got to be relevant. We've got to know the problems of the day if we're going to be able to point them out and solve them. And then can I say this? We've got to be favorable. We've got to get back to God's favor. Get back to where His blessings are flowing. You know what will attract bees? Honey. Pollen. Blessings. Sweet things. We need to get back to where the sweetness of God's flowing. And then people will count. Why do you think some of these mega churches are filled with so many people? Because they're all seeking for something. And what they're being pumped in, what's being pumped into them is, is fluff. Imagine what would happen if they get a taste of the real thing. But you know what they know about independent Baptists? We're all mean, and we got a bunch of rules. That's all they know. No, we have truth and the love of Christ. But we don't project that. God help us. 
America's doomed. Say, preacher, how could you say that? Well, I've read prophecy and studied prophecy, and I never find America in prophecy. America's going to be gone when it all comes down. And we're seeing it now. Banks defaulting. And we've had banks default in America before, but not so closely together, and not one where all the elites had their money. Hmm. And there's been a big push for this digital currency. You buy stuff that isn't there. No, I want to buy gold and want to hold gold. I don't want to buy some techno something out there that isn't there. Because all they do is flip a switch and it's gone. I'm telling you, America has been sold a bill of goods and America's going bad. And America don't care as long as they can party, as long as they can have their sports, as long as they can work a menial job and have enough money to party and have their menial sports. They don't care. As long as they can have their little pea patch and nobody bother them, they don't care. And they've been lulled to sleep. And when the Antichrist shows up, they'll follow him just like they're following our government today. People are still wearing masks, even though it's been debunked that it won't help them. Even though it's being debunked, but you've got to read it to find it because you're never going to hear it on mainstream media. A lot of the things that I told you during COVID, I was right. It was created in a lab, and it was created to control people. Amen. But we got too many soft husbands in Congress that won't indict Fauci. I'm just trying to tell you today, America is shot. The only hope is if you and I get right with God, and then others get right with God. God help us to not be abominable in God's sight. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll come get a song of invitation. Oh, he's coming. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. I love America, Lord, but I hate what she's becoming. And Lord, I know deep in my heart in most of the towns of America, most people don't think, about, think like what's being promoted as Americans. We've become a laughing stock to other nations that once respected us. God, it's all Americans' fault. We're not a victim. America has made choices. And families have made choices. And churches have made choices. And Lord, you even said in the last days perilous times shall come. God, I'm glad you have a remnant. Throughout the Bible, you always have a remnant who serves you, who's faithful, who longs for you. God, help us to be a remnant. Help us, Lord, to yield ourselves to be used of the Lord. God, help our homes to be pleasing unto you. Help our church to be pleasing unto you. Help our lives to be pleasing unto you. Help us to be, Lord, a light set in this dark place called earth. And God, I certainly pray we'd get a burden for souls, get a burden for righteousness, a burden for holiness. Help us, Lord, to control what we can and then do for us what we cannot do. Lord, bless our people now. Help them, Lord. Many of them strive to live right and do right. I know that. Lord, you gave me that message for a purpose. Now use it for your glory. Lord, bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.